On November 1st of 2019, FaZe Jarvis loaded into what would be his last Fortnite match ever. Previously one of Fortnite's most popular and talented pro players, Jarvis had an idea for a video that would ultimately end his career. Today, I will not only be covering the story of FaZe Jarvis, but of Fortnite's five most notorious cheaters, starting with Letwick. Letwick was a very young Fortnite player from the country of Russia, and at only 14 years old, he entered the 2019 Fortnite World Cup. Cup. This was the biggest esports tournament in history, and still is even to this day, with a prize pool of over $30 million. He was flown out to New York City all the way from his hometown in Moscow, Russia, by Epic Games. He was playing in the solo finals, which comprised of six different solo matches. The higher you place in each match, and the more eliminations you get, the more points are awarded. During the first five matches, Letwick had a pretty average performance. He was somewhere in the middle of the leaderboard going into the last game. But that is when everything would change. Just a few minutes after the start of the final game, Letwick was approached by the Epic Games staff, and he had a really confused look on his face. It looked like the Epic Games staff was asking him to move away from his computer. It turns out this is exactly what they were doing because they were accusing Letwick of screen peeking. That's right, in a $30 million tournament, Letwick was doing what we do with our siblings, peeking at each other's screens. This obviously immediately disqualified him from the final match, and he had to take himself out of the game. However, this didn't prevent Letwick from getting the $50,000 that he had already earned by making the tournament, however, they wouldn't allow him to place any higher than a hundredth, losing him potentially tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars. In an interview with the Fortnite guy, here's what Letwick had to say about the situation. And what Let W tells me is at one point in game six, when it was like halfway through, there was 55 people alive, he heard a slam on the desk next to him. So out of reaction, he looked over and the admins and staff saw it and they decided to disqualify him and make him leave the game. Not only that, that, but apparently Epic got Letwick the wrong keyboard, which just added to his frustration about everything that happened that day. But despite Letwick's explanation, Epic did not budge on their stance on what had happened. In fact, they doubled down, claiming that Letwick was given multiple warnings to stop looking at the other screens before they finally stopped him from playing. Even though Letwick was disqualified from the Fortnite World Cup, it didn't stop him from competing in other future Fortnite events, and he continued to play competitively until 2021. He earned nearly $200,000 in total earnings in his Fortnite career, and although he doesn't play competitively anymore, he still streams on his Twitch channel to this day. However, that wasn't the only drama brewing at the 2019 Fortnite World Cup. The biggest scandal of the tournament surrounded Ziff and Ronaldo. Let me explain. In order to qualify for the Fortnite World Cup, players had to play through multiple rounds of qualifiers in the weeks leading up to the event. These qualifiers took place between April and June of 2019. On May 3rd of 2019, both Ziff and Ronaldo were given 14-day bans. According to multiple sources, their friends Bad, Uji and Jesty are shown throwing the game off drop following an almost comically bad shootout. Uji lands. What is Uji doing? He sees him land on the pump. Starts pickaxing this. Doesn't grab the pump. Pickaxes the chest. Dies. This sort of gameplay is expected from low-level bots, but not so-called professional players trying to make it to the World Cup. Following these accusations, Ziff said that they were all fake and the teaming was totally false, and he accuses Jesty of only landing on him because he's a fan. When Ziff was asked about what happened, this was his explanation. Yes, I know who Bad and Wuji is, but I also know half of the people playing in the qualifiers. I'm bound to run into people that I know or who have played against before. According to the video provided by High Sky, Wuji didn't see the pump, went for the dullies, and got into my LOL. He then tries to go and pick up the pump, but due to a looting slash pickup bug, he probably failed to grab the gun, and I was able to finish the kill. And for those people saying that Jesty is my friend or that I'm good friends with him, I'm not. Whatever Jesty did during the World Cup qualifiers and his actions have nothing to do with me. Jesty landing on me is as good as any fan landing on their favorite streamer or pro player. I'm innocent and will leave it up to Epic Games to review the situation. The Fortnite community didn't exactly believe this half-hearted response, and a lot of holes were poking in his story, showing that Ziff is closer to Jesty than he might seem to be. Even though this team got banned for 14 days, they were still allowed to compete in the Fortnite World Cup in July. And some fans even showed up wearing t-shirts that said lock Ziff up. And whenever the duo was shown on screen throughout the tournament, they were booed by the entire crowd. <laughs> that Ziff and Ronaldo were eliminated, the crowd burst into cheers so loud that at one point Epic had to mute the broadcast as to not be embarrassed. Now let's go ahead and take a look. Oh, and Ziff is out of here. Funk, it's... 
I think I saw, I could have sworn I saw Funk there, but no. Comment down below if you guys think Ziff and Ronaldo were in the wrong. And despite all the chaos, Ziff and Ronaldo managed to place 28th in the duos tournament, which meant that they walked home with $100,000 even after cheating. Five years later, Ziff no longer plays Fortnite and has actually moved on to playing professional Valorant. And Ronaldo also moved over to Pro Valorant, but wasn't as successful as his old duo partner, Ziff. He hasn't even been seen online since 2022. And before we go on to the next cheater, make sure you guys watch to the end of the video because our fifth and final cheater is a huge surprise and many of you will be shocked by what I have to say. Our next cheater is the youngest on this list and his name is Kquid. Kquid is a Fortnite prodigy from the country of Australia. Being born in 2006, he was only 13 years old at the time of the April 2019 FNCS qualifiers. After placing first place in the qualifiers, he made his way to the grand finals and placed six. However, this wasn't the end for Kquid. In April of 2020, Kquid and his team placed first in the OCE FNCS Grand Finals. I'm just saying, I have one build, one build. Not a TV. Let's go! Let's go! It was so Let's good! Go! This was easily the biggest achievement of Kquid's career and launched both his Twitch and YouTube channels to new heights. However, this was all about to come crashing down with a bang because in May of 2020, Kquid got banned mid-tournament, kicking him out of the game in front of all of his fans while he was live streaming. What? Who logged in? Who logged into my account? The crash initially was overlooked by the Fortnite community as some kind of glitch. However, a few days later, Serpent AU on Twitter released a video exposing Kquid's use of UCR, also known as Universal Control Remapper. This can give players an unfair advantage while playing Fortnite. You know, he's banned. He's banned for using this. He used this, obviously. Why would it be on his desktop for so long? Following this damning accusation, Kquid continued to fight for his innocence, and he promised to make a true video statement. But that video never came. Kquid took a few months off of social media and eventually released the following tweet a month later. His accuser Serpent AU was eventually accused of hacking as well and actually admitted to doing it. Some people said that because Serpent was a cheater, it was actually likely that he would know that Kquid was genuinely cheating. However, later on, Serpent would go on to say that Kquid never actually cheated, but some people said that he's only doing this because Kquid paid him to do so. In the four years since Kquid was accused of hacking, he slowly returned to the internet. He was actually eventually unbanned from Fortnite and returned to competitive tournaments, but he was never able to achieve the same success he had before the ban. Player 4 is up next, and this is possibly one of our most famous cheaters in all of Fortnite history, and his name is FaZe Jarvis. Jarvis first started to upload to YouTube in 2014, way before Fortnite even came out. Three years before to be exact, he started off with inconsistency, posting FPS gaming content. It wasn't until 2018 that his channel really blew up, however, when he started posting Fortnite. His Fortnite content consisted of him getting crazy wins, cool trick shots, and unbelievably high kill counts under different difficult circumstances. Oh. He was so good, in fact, that in 2019, he was invited to join FaZe Clan. I've joined FaZe, guys. <laughs> Bro, I've never, I haven't actually said that out loud. Like, I've joined FaZe. It sounds so weird saying it. Jarvis then moved across the world from the United Kingdom to the United States, where he moved into the FaZe house and got into content creating full time. His videos fit the typical Fortnite challenge format, like winning with first weapon challenge or winning with only gray guns. He even collaborated with other major content creators outside of FaZe, like Pokimane and Rice Gum. However, his Fortnite career was about to come to a screeching halt. Believe it or not, Jarvis recorded a video of himself using aimbot in Fortnite. And I'm gonna have aimbot, you will see, trust me, you will see. Yes, you heard that right. He made a video of himself using aimbot. So you guys can see on my screen, I've definitely got the hacks. You can see where people are going. Oh my gosh, man. Oh, oh. I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry, what? Of course, Epic Games was not going to let that slide. I'm not sure how many of you know this, but I've actually been permanently banned on Fortnite for life. Here he explained how much of a mistake it was to use aimbot, and he clarified that he was only using it in solos and playground, and never once used it in the professional game mode. The damage was already done. You know, it's crazy that I, I'm, I can never play Fortnite again, or even create content for you guys. Despite his desperate pleas, Jarvis's lifetime ban remained. He could never make a 
Fortnite video or play in a Fortnite tournament ever again. Even though he was banned from Fortnite, Jarvis didn't disappear from the internet. He continued to focus on his IRL content, and he currently has 5.6 million subscribers on YouTube, only occasionally milking the fact that he's perma-banned on Fortnite. Now, Jarvis seems to be focusing on professional boxing, getting in the ring with other YouTubers who want to be boxers, and making a lot of money doing it, but not making as much money as our final cheater and the most controversial one, Clicks. Okay, okay, before you all start yelling at me, let me explain. If you guys don't know who Clicks is, he's become a major internet personality both in Fortnite and IRL content, and he often streams to an average of 20,000 viewers. It was actually because of these viewers that in April 2023, tragedy struck Clicks' Fortnite account. Out of nowhere, he was hit with a 14-day ban for teaming. Because of this ban, Clicks was now disqualified from multiple professional events, including FNCS, Grand Finals, and the Copenhagen Land. But was Clicks really cheating? Clicks, one of the most wealthy and well-known streamers, really try and cheat in a solo victory cup for $100? The answer isn't so cut and dry. You see, the account accused of teaming with Clicks in this solo victory tournament was a stream sniper who was known for messing with Clicks. Here's Clicks explaining the situation. He beat me the whole entire time. He's following me since the since the start. He was following me, shooting me. He did over 350 damage to me the whole entire game. Towards the end of the game, the stream sniper drops a pizza for Clicks, and without thinking, Clicks picks up the pizza. I do think that I should have left the game. I should have left the game after I got that pizza from the stream sniper. Keep in mind, Clicks streams to 20,000 viewers on a very regular basis, and he's no stranger to being stream sniped. Then, the stream sniper continues to approach Clicks, resulting in his elimination from the game. When asked about the events, Clicks said this. He followed me right here, sits in my wall, goes up and down, and lets me kill him, okay? Let's me kill him. So no matter, no matter what chat, I would have got the all the loot that he gave me, and, and I went out to win the game. From watching the VOD, it's clear that Clicks himself was doing everything he could to prove that he was being stream sniped. Despite his best efforts and evidence, Clicks was unable to get the ban lifted from his account. Because of the Clicks situation, Epic actually ended up changing their rules June of last year. Now players that have a ban of 14 days or less are only prohibited from one FNCS tournament instead of two, which finally allowed Clicks to return to the world of competing in Fortnite. I'm on ban! Surprise, Let's go! Dubby's in the chat right now! Comment down below if you guys think Clicks was treated unfairly, and if you guys enjoyed this content, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.